Chapter 1 of the Tao Te Ching The Tao that can be talked about is not the true Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. Everything in the universe comes out of nothing. Nothing, the nameless, is the beginning. While heaven, the mother, is the creatrix of all things. Follow the nothingness of the Tao, and you can be like it, not needing anything, seeing the wonder and the root of everything. And even if you cannot grasp this nothingness, you can still see something of the Tao in everything. These two are the same, only called by different names, and both are mysterious and wonderful. All mysteries are Tao, and heaven is their mother. She is the gateway and the womb door. So this is simultaneously a hilarious and a very important way to start this book. Obviously, the funny part of it is Lao Tzu is writing this first verse, and he's going to write 80 more verses. And in the first line, he's saying, the thing that I can tell you, the words that I can use to describe the Tao to you, it's not actually the Tao, which is just funny, because then he's going to write dozens more verses describing the Tao. Um, but I think the important point that he's making here, which is just true in all of life, is the clumsiness of language, and that words are a symbol of a thing, but words are not actually the thing. So if I say, I'm going to knock on wood, you know what it means to knock on wood. But if I say, I'm knocking on wood, it is not the same as, it stands for that, and it lets you know that what I'm meaning is, But they aren't one in the same. One is a symbol or a representation or a way of communicating a concept of the other. And so I think that's important just generally in, in life that there's an understanding of the clumsiness of language, that language is a symbol, a representation, but it is not the actual thing. And so there's always going to be a gap there. And it's funny, but it's also deeply sort of meaningful and, and true, which is an interesting way to begin a book for sure. Um, the other thing that stands out to me in this is nothingness. So everything in the universe comes out of nothing. Nothing, the nameless, is the beginning. And to me, when I think of what my baseline true being, true nature is, I've come to, to believe that, it, that my baseline nature is nothing. Because if you think of consciousness and the body, so we take two different things. The body, it's more obvious, right? Your body comes from partly your parents at first, and then the food that you eat, and then the things that you consume, and the air that you breathe, and these things are all ultimately coming from the earth or the universe in a tangible sense. The non-tangible consciousness element of it seems, you know, when you come, when, when you are born, it seems as though that consciousness element of it comes from nothing. Like, it just appears out of nowhere. And then at death, as far as we know, you know, the consciousness is once again gone, at least from this physical realm, and the the body that the consciousness animated is appears that that's no longer an animating factor. And so it returns to nothing. So to me, what this says is the baseline is nothingness, and in between the nothings, there is this, you know, I'll put in, in air quotes, alive, aliveness that happens during life, but that the origination and 
say the summation, are nothing. But what that means is the only way for something to exist is for there to be nothing. Because it's out of the nothingness that all things come to be, including sort of non-tangible, non-sensory things like consciousness. And so I think that that's important that he's, again, calling that out at the, at the very beginning here. Um, the Tao is nameless, nothingness, uh, and, and that is the mother of all creation, of all the things, and it's true. Uh, if you drill down further and further and deeper and deeper and deeper, smaller and smaller, ultimately you're, you're just left with, well, these things are sprouting out of nothing. Um, and, and there's a, a bizarre beauty in that. And this brings me to the last part. Speaking of bizarre beauty, uh, in this text it says mysterious and wonderful, right? Both are mysterious and wonderful. Um, again, the mystery is wonderful because it's mysterious, and it's mysterious because we can only think or speak about it in words. And so we can't get to the true nature of it. And so it remains a mystery to us. So the thing that we experience before we're born, and the thing that we experience after this life is done, are mysterious because they are inexplainable. And by inexplainable, we're basically meaning we have no way to explain it. And I know I'm saying something very obvious there, but think about what that means. That means there are not no words to accurately describe it. It's an indescribable thing. And so this takes us back to the first line. The thing that you can, the words that you can use to think about it, because remember, you don't just speak in words, you think in words. And so this really expands that clumsiness of language beyond just there's a clumsiness in being able to, to say something or describe something to yourself or someone else. All of your internal chatter, all of those thoughts and, and that little person inside that's saying things to you all day, that's also, they're just caught in the clumsiness of language and providing you representations of reality, but they aren't providing you with the actual reality because you're thinking in language. You're thinking in words. And so the mystery of that nothingness will always remain a mystery in, in this state where we can only think or conceptualize in words. So there is no way to get to that ground truth and uncover that mystery because of that barrier that's created by thinking and speaking and conceptualizing in words.